Well, we can ask ourselves what the purpose of an educational system is. And of course, there are uh, sharp differences on, on this matter. Uh, there's the uh, traditional in, an interpretation that comes from the Enlightenment, which uh, holds that uh, the highest goal in life is uh, to inquire and create, uh, to uh, uh, search the uh, riches of the past, uh, try to uh, uh, internalize the parts of them that are significant to you, uh, carry that uh, quest for understanding further in your own way. Uh, uh, purpose of education uh, from that point of view is just to help people uh, uh, d determine how to learn on their own. Uh, it's you, the learner, who is going to achieve uh, in the course of education. And it's really up to you what you'll, uh, uh, what you'll master, where you'll go, how you'll use it, uh, uh, how you'll go on to uh, uh, produce something new and exciting for yourself, maybe for others. That's one concept of education. The other concept is essentially indoctrination. Uh, people have to, the idea that from childhood, uh, uh, young people have to be uh, 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 placed into a framework in which they'll uh, follow orders, accept uh, existing frameworks and not challenge and so on. And this is often quite explicit. And so for example, after the, uh, in the, uh, after the uh, activism of the 1960s, uh, there was great concern across uh, much of the uh, educated spectrum uh, that uh, uh, young people were just getting too uh, free and independent uh, that the country was becoming too democratic and so on. And in fact, there's an important study on uh, what's called the crisis of democracy, too much democracy, uh, uh, arguing that uh, uh, there are, uh, claiming that there are certain institutions responsible for the indoctrination of the young, that's their phrase, and they're not doing their job properly. That's uh, schools, universities, churches, we have to change them so that they carry out the job of indoctrination and control more effectively. That's actually coming from the liberal internationalist uh, uh, end of the spectrum of the, inter of the uh, spectrum of educated opinion. And in fact, since that time, there have been many measures taken to try to uh, turn uh, the educational system towards uh, more control, more indoctrination, uh, uh, more vocational training, uh, 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 imposing a debt which traps students, young people, into a life of conformity and so on. That's uh, the exact opposite of the uh, of what I refer to as the tradition that comes out of the Enlightenment. And there's a constant struggle between those uh, in the colleges, in the schools. Uh, in the schools, do you, uh, uh, do you uh, train for passing tests or do you train for uh, a creative uh, inquiry, uh, pursuing uh, interests that are aroused by material that's presented and that you want to pursue either on your own or in cooperation with others. And this goes all the way through uh, uh, up to uh, you know, graduate school and research. Just two different ways of looking at the world. When you, when you get to, a, say, a research institution like the one we're now in, at the graduate level, it, uh, it essentially follows the uh, Enlightenment tradition. In fact, science and, uh, uh, couldn't progress unless it was uh, based on uh, inculcation of the uh, urge to challenge, uh, to uh, uh, question uh, doctrine, question authority, uh, search for alternatives, uh, uh, use your imagination, uh, act freely under your own impulses, cooperative work with others is constant as you can see just by walking down the halls. Uh, that's in my view what uh, an educational system should be like down to kindergarten. Uh, but uh, there's uh, 
certainly are uh, powerful structures in the society which would prefer people to be indoctrinated, conform, not ask too many questions, be obedient, uh, fulfill the uh, roles that are assigned to you and don't try to shake systems of power and authority. Uh, those are choices we have to make either as uh, people that wherever we stand in the educational system as students, as teachers, as people on the outside trying to help shape it in the directions in which we think it ought to go. Well, there certainly has been uh, a very uh, substantial growth in uh, uh, new technology, technology of communication, information, uh, access, interchange. It's surely a major change in the nature of the culture and society. Uh, so we should bear in mind that the technological changes that are taking place now, while they're significant, uh, uh, have probably come nowhere near having as much impact as uh, technological advances of, say, you know, century ago, plus or minus. So the shift, say, let's take just communication. The shift from uh, uh, a typewriter to a computer or a, a, a telephone to the uh, uh, email is significant, but it doesn't begin to compare with the shift from uh, a sailing vessel to a telegraph. I mean, the time that that cut down in communication between, say, England and the United States was extraordinary as compared with the changes taking place now. And the same is true of other kinds of technology, like just introduction of, say, plumbing. The widespread plumbing in the cities had a huge effect on health, much more than the discovery of antibiotics. So the changes are real and significant, but we should recognize that others have taken place, which in many ways were more dramatic. Uh, the, as far as the technology itself and education is concerned, uh, the technology is, uh, is basically neutral. It's kind of like a hammer. I mean, you can, the hammer doesn't care whether you use it to build a house or uh, whether a torturer uses it to crush somebody's skull. The hammer can do either. Uh, same with the modern technology, say the internet and so on. Uh, the internet is extremely valuable if you know what you're looking for. I mean, I, I use it all the time for research. I'm sure everyone does. If you know the kind of what you're looking for, you have a, a kind of a framework of understanding which uh, directs you to particular things, it lets you uh, sideline lots of others, uh, then this can be a very valuable tool. Of course, you always have to be willing to ask, is my framework the right one? Maybe I ought to modify it. Maybe if there's something I look at that questions it, I should rethink how I'm looking at things. But you can't pursue any kind of inquiry uh, without a, a pretty uh, relatively clear framework that's directing your search and uh, helping you choose what's significant and what isn't, uh, what can be put aside, what ought to be pursued. Uh, what ought to be challenged, what ought to be developed, and so on. I mean, you can't expect somebody to become a biologist, say, by uh, 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 giving them access to the uh, uh, Harvard University Biology Library and say, just look through it. Uh, that'll give them nothing. And the internet is the same, except magnified enormously. Uh, if you don't understand, what, know what you're looking for, if you don't have some kind of a conception of what matters, always, of course, with the proviso that you're willing to question it if it seems to be going in the wrong direction. If you don't have that, uh, exploring the internet is just uh, picking out the random factoids that don't mean anything. Uh, so behind any significant use of contemporary technology, the internet, uh, communication systems, uh, what, graphics, whatever it may be, uh, behind, unless behind it is some uh, well-constructed 
directive conceptual apparatus, it is very unlikely to be helpful. It may turn out to be harmful. Now, for example, uh, a random exploration through the internet uh, turns out to be a, a, a cult generator. You pick up a factoid here and a factoid there, and somebody else reinforces it, and uh, all of a sudden you have some uh, uh, you know, crazed uh, picture which has some factual basis but nothing to do with the world. Uh, you have to know how to evaluate, interpret, and understand. I mean, the, the, say biology again, the, the person who wins the Nobel Prize in biology is not the person who read the most journal articles and uh, took most notes on them. It's the person who knew what to look for. And cultivating that capacity to seek what's significant always willing to question whether you're on the right track. Now, that's what uh, education is going to be about, whether it's using uh, computers and the internet or pencil and paper and books. Well, I, uh, education is discussed in terms of whether it's a worthwhile investment, that does it create human capital that can be used for economic growth and so on. Uh, that's a very strange, it's a, it kind of a, a, a very uh, distorting way to even pose the question, I think. Uh, do we want to have a society of free, creative, independent individuals uh, able to appreciate and uh, gain from the cultural achievements of the past and to add to them. Do we want that? Or do we want people who can uh, increase GDP? They're not necessarily the same, they're not the same thing. And uh, uh, a, a, an education of the kind that, uh, uh, say, Bertrand Russell, John Dewey and others talked about, that's a value in itself. Uh, Whatever, uh, whatever impact it has in the society, it's a value because it helps create better human beings. And after all, that's what an educational system should be for. On the other hand, if you want to look at it in terms of uh, costs and benefits, uh, take the new technology that we were just talking about, where did that come from? Well, actually a lot of it was developed right where we're sitting, uh, down below where we now are was a major laboratory back in the 1950s, where I was employed, in fact, which was uh, had uh, lots of uh, scientists, engineers, uh, uh, people of all kinds of interests, philosophers, others, who were working on developing the basic character of the, and even the basic tools of the uh, that technology that is now common. Computers and the internet, for example, uh, were pretty much in the public sector for decades, just funded in places like this, uh, where people were exploring new possibilities that were mostly unthought of, at the, unheard of at the time. Uh, some of them worked, some didn't. The ones that worked were finally converted into tools that people can use. Uh, that's the way uh, scientific progress takes place, it's the way uh, that cultural progress takes place uh, generally. Uh, uh, classical uh, uh, artists, for example, came out of a tradition of craftsmanship that was developed over long periods with uh, master artisans, with others, and sometimes uh, you can rise on their shoulders and uh, create do. Uh, uh, marvelous things, uh, but it doesn't come from nowhere if there isn't uh, a, a lively uh, 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 cultural and educational system which is geared towards encouraging uh, creative exploration, uh, independence of thought, uh, willingness to uh, challenge, to cross frontiers, to challenge accepted beliefs and so on. If you don't have that, you're not going to get the technology that can lead to uh, uh, economic gains, though that I don't think is the prime purpose of uh, uh, cultural
cultural enrichment and education as a part of it. Um, there is in the recent period particularly uh, an increasing uh, shaping of uh, education from the early ages towards on uh, towards uh, passing examinations uh, that can be t uh, taking tests can be of some use uh, both for the person who's taking the test see what I know and where, where I am what I've achieved what I haven't uh, for instructors uh, uh, what should be changed and improved in, uh, in developing the a course of instruction, but beyond that, they don't really tell you very much. I mean, I know for for many many years, I was on, I've been on admissions committees for uh, uh, entry into an advanced graduate program, maybe one of the most advanced anywhere, and we of course pay some attention to test results, but really not too much. I mean, uh, you can. Uh, uh, a person can uh, do magnificently on every test and understand very little. I mean, all of us who've been through uh, schools and colleges and universities are very familiar with this. Uh, you can be assigned, uh, 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 you can be in some, say, course uh, that you have no interest in, and uh, there's a demand that you pass a, a test, and you can study hard for the test, and you can. Uh, ace it, to use the idiom, you do fine. And uh, three week, uh, a couple of weeks later, you forgot what the, what the topic was. I'm sure we've all had that experience. I know I have. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it can be a useful device if it contributes to uh, the constructive purposes of education. Uh, if it's just a set of hurdles you have to cross, it can turn out to be not only meaningless, but it can divert you away from things you ought to be doing. Actually, I see this regularly when I talk to teachers. I'll just give you one experience from a couple of weeks ago, but there's plenty like it. I happened to be talking to a group which included many school teachers. And one of them was a sixth grade teacher, teaches kids, I guess, 10 or 11 or 11 or 12, something like that. Uh, she came up to me afterwards, and I'd been talking about these things, and she told me that of an experience that she had just had. Uh, uh, in her class, uh, after one of the classes, uh, a little girl came up to her and said she was really interested in something that came up, and she asked how she could, uh, could the teacher give her some ideas about how to look into it further. And the teacher was compelled to tell her, I'm sorry, but you can't do that. You have to study to pass this uh, uh, national exam that's coming. Uh, that's going to determine your future. The teacher didn't say it, but it's going to determine my future, like uh, whether I am rehired and so on. Uh, the system is geared to getting the children to pass hurdles, but not to learn and understand and explore. Now that child would have been better off if she had been allowed to explore what she was interested in and maybe not do so well in the test about things she wasn't interested in. And they'll come along when they fit into her interests and concerns. And uh, so a test, I don't say that tests should be eliminated, they can be a useful educational tool, but ancillary, you know, something that's just helping improve for ourselves, for instructors and others, what we're doing, and tell us where we ought to be uh, moving. But they don't even, passing tests doesn't begin to compare with, uh, 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 it, with uh, searching and inquiring and uh, uh, into uh, uh, pursuing topics that engage us and uh, excite us. That's uh, far more significant than passing tests. And in fact, if you pursue, if you, uh, uh, if that's the kind of educational career that you're given the opportunity to pursue, you will remember what you discovered. Uh, she was a famous physicist, a world famous physicist, uh, right here at MIT, who, uh, like a lot of the senior faculty, was teaching freshman courses. Uh, he once said that uh, 
in his freshman course, students will ask, uh, what are we going to cover this semester? And his standard answer was, it doesn't matter what we cover. It matters what you discover. And that's right. Uh, teaching ought to be uh, in, uh, inspiring students to discover on their own, uh, uh, to, to, to challenge if they don't agree, to look for alternatives if they think they're better ones, uh, to uh, work through the uh, great achievements of the past and try to master them on their own because they're interested in them. If that's the way uh, uh, teaching and, uh, is done, students will uh, really gain from it and will uh, uh, not only remember what they studied, but will be able to use it as a basis for going on on their own. And again, education is really aimed at just uh, uh, helping students get to the point where they can learn on their own, because that's what you're going to do for, their, for, for your life, not just uh, absorb material given to you from the outside and repeat it.